It's another edition of the UTRGV Baseball Show. My name is Jonah Goldberg. This is the head coach of UTRGV, Manny Mintrana. Hello, Jonah. What happened to your uh, remote? <laughs> it is sitting very safely in the office, okay. where it is no help to me whatsoever. No, it is not. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're coming off of, uh, you've played five games at home uh, at the start of an eight-game homestand, three and two on the homestand so far. You know, it started with uh, a big sweep of Arlington Baptist. You outscored them 29 to 1 in three games, and that one run was unearned. So your pitchers had a zero ERA. That's that's pretty good. Hey, it's it's <laughs> tough. It's tough to lose when um, the other team doesn't score or the other team only scores uh, one run, Jonah. Um, so that was uh, good. Uh, I thought that uh, we needed to do that this weekend uh, or that weekend, uh, and our our bats and our offense woke up a little bit. Um, so that was uh, b good on both sides, uh, the pitching side, which I expected for our pitchers to dominate, and also for our offense to wake up a little bit. I think one of the keys I take away from that weekend is, and really from the whole season, your pitchers are throwing a ton of strikes this year. It was a 21 to 3 strikeout to walk ratio in those three games, and uh, it's really been all season. You guys aren't walking anybody. Yeah, we kind of uh, had to change it up a little bit. Early on, we were really walking way too many. Um, you know, the goal for the pitching staff is uh, – three to one ratio of strikeouts to walks. And we were barely, um, you know, one to one. So uh, Coach Nelson and I got together, we decided to fine tune it to where they, they throw more towards the middle of the plate um, and utilize our defense. And it's, uh, it's paid off uh, it, um, some dividends. Coach Nelson really seems to be making that early impact. You know, you talk about the, the throwing strikes and I've seen what he's done, certainly with a guy like Parker Gallego slurring his arm slot yesterday we saw Matt Rigby for the first time with a lower arm slot as well. He's making some changes, and uh, some of them really seem to be working out. Yeah, he's, um, he's done a good job. Uh, since he got here, he's uh, very open-minded. Uh, he's picked my brain. We've worked together on um, several things. Uh, um, he has his own ideas, which also, obviously, um, you want them, your assistants, to bring their own ideas, and you help him out as much as you can. But at the end of the day, he's a pitching coach. He's going to make those decisions that, uh, that affect the pitching staff. What have you thought, uh, you know, your bullpen for the most part, uh, you have a few guys that are really locked down. Like I looked yesterday, Texas A&M Corpus Christi, first game, 6-3 loss. But when you go to the bullpen, your final four and two-thirds innings, perfect. You know what? Um, we do have some guys in the bullpen um, and some more now with uh, Eddie Delgado is, is back uh, and he's healthy. He's going to be a very good arm force. With Eddie, we don't really know if we're going to use him out of the bullpen, or because he can also start for us. But Parker has done a really good job. Uh, Zach Martinez has done a good job. Um, and again, that, that, uh, that game, uh, if we don't walk those two uh, or hit those two guys in the same inning, I think we win that game. Um, but it's something that we need to, you know, to continue to work on. Um, and the roles are beginning to be filled out for our opening uh, WAC weekend. So, uh, you know, once the, the roles are pretty much established, um, I think uh, our bullpen has some uh, – some real potential. And, you, you know, in, in that game, you mentioned, you know, the, the two hit batters. It led to the grand slam and a four-run fifth inning. But, you know, that grand slam was really the only hard hit ball against Austin Kufrovich in four and a third innings of work. You know what? Austin threw a lot better uh, than he did his first outing. Um, and we were hoping to see that. Um, and he did for the most part, uh, you know, for except for that inning and those two hitters, I thought he threw the ball uh, pretty well, kept us in the game, threw a lot of strikes. Um, and Austin is a guy that we're going to count on, um, whether, again, whether we use him as a starter or out of the bullpen to really help us uh, uh, get better. It's, it's so fascinating just watching it unfold as your rotation, is, you know, the weekends has been really good. And you, you're starting to see options in the four and five. Pablo Ortiz uh, had another pretty good outing yesterday before the very end of it. And then, you know, Kufrovich having his best outing. So it gives you... You only have one more week where you have two games in the same in-between conference, uh, in-between weekend series. And otherwise, it's one game or zero games. So it gives you options when you're trying to think about who do you want in the bullpen, who do you want to start the weekday game. That's right. Um, and as soon as this weekend is over, Jonah, Brian and I are going to sit together and um, go over all the pitchers and what the roles are going to be uh, heading into the opening whack weekend at uh, Northern Colorado. Uh, this weekend, only two games. So uh, do you worry about trying to get as many people in as possible to make sure they have that work? Well, the, the plus about uh, this weekend, we're only playing Friday at 7 and Saturday at 6, is that uh, Ryan Jackson, you move him to the bullpen. So getting him to the bullpen for those two, two, you know, those two games, um, in addition to Delgado, in addition to Zach, in addition to Parker, 
Um, I mean, we can bring guys in that can really uh, shut the, uh, the opponent down and give us an opportunity to maintain the lead or the opportunity to win the game. Uh, we talked a little about the, the offense earlier. He hit 370 over the weekend against Arlington Baptist. He strung together uh, a few hits yesterday, seven in the first game, and I think you were about nine or so in the second game. And, uh, you know, those bats, are, they're starting to get on base, starting to come around, and uh, right, right at the right time is your week out from conference play. You're right. Um, and, again, I thought the um, uh, Arlington Baptist week and our hitters should have, should have done that, um, I mean, offensively, and they did. But what was uh, – what was encouraging was also uh, with Corpus Christi. They, they threw their weekend arms. They didn't play last uh, weekend. So um, we faced their, their best arms because um, they had a game a series rained out. Um, and our guys did well. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, seven hits in one game, nine in the other, plus some hard hit balls right at people. Um, the strikeout to walkout ratio was okay. So our, our, de our offense is definitely uh, waking up a little bit and, as you said, at the right time. And Joseph Coyazo is becoming just an on-base machine at the top of the lineup. You know what, uh, Coyazo and and Maito Garcia have really been our, our two most consistent hitters. They've been um, consistent since day one. And what we're looking forward to is to get those other guys that we feel are good players that are going to help us win, it, like Lancar, uh, Victor Garcia, um, you know, Mercer, those guys that we feel can swing the bat for us just to get them hot. And if we get uh, two or three or more of those guys swinging the bat, in addition to Coyasso and, and, and Garcia, we'd be able to, to, uh, to put up some runs. One guy has been swinging the hot bat recently, Manny Laredo. I think over the last three games he has six or seven hits. You know what, he's, um, he's really come a long way, Joe, uh, both offensively and defensively. Um, he is a tremendous worker. Uh, any day you come, if you are you know come to our batting practice, you'll see a, a short left-handed kid running around, um, chasing all kinds of balls in the outfield, and that's Manny Laredo. Uh, He's really improved uh, uh, defensively, and he's come a long way offensively. So, uh, you know what? He's he's earned a starting spot um, against right-handed pitchers. Uh, still, left-handers give him a little bit of problems, um, but he handles the right-handed pitching pretty pretty well. A lot of right-handed pitchers out there, so it, you know he he he's going to see a lot of playing time. And you can see your starting lineup starting to come into focus. You see the positional battles are starting to come into focus as well. You know. The only things that were somewhat times we've seen a little change, Austin Oaks sometimes at DH, Jacob Huckabee was in right field for a game yesterday. So a couple of guys still move around, but for the most part, you've really found uh, that a combination. Well, you know what, Huck has, has to be in the lineup. Um, played third base for us while, while Victor Garcia was out. We moved Scott uh, Mercer to first and did a great job for us. Um, but Huck is having a pretty good uh, uh, year with the bat. I think he's hitting 270, 290, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, he, and he's just beginning to get hot. So um, we put him in the outfield, hit some fungos to him. Um, he made it look easy. Uh, he catches the ball with, but without a problem. Uh, so he's going to be starting out there in the outfield because we need him in the lineup. And he's one of those kids that really, really plays hard and, and cares uh, about the, uh, the program and about the wins and about the losses. It seems like no matter where you put Huckabee, whether it's catcher, third, outfield, he seems to be uh, just fine. I remember in the fall, I think you had him at second base at times. And do you think he's the kind of guy that could really just play any position and just be fine? Well, you know, I think with, with Huck, the biggest thing, uh, obviously he's versatile. Um, he was our catcher. We moved him to third. Now we're pro, you know, playing in right field. I think the biggest thing with, with Huck is that he's, uh, he's really enjoying the game this year, uh, Jonah. Um, he was trying to do so well um, in, the, in, you know, in the years past that um, he wasn't really having fun. Uh, mm. I think he's having fun. Um, he's enjoying it. He's laughing a lot more, and obviously it's, it's going to show in your productivity. So um, Huck is another guy that we're counting on uh, as an upperclassman to have a, a good year for us and help us win some games. Uh, Austin Oaks, another guy who we've seen in different positions over the weekend. Uh, he saw a little bit of time at catcher. Well, you know what? You're going to see some more um, changes. Um, uh, Oaks is, has moved up to be our number two catcher. Our number two catcher, um, Austin Douglas, we're converting him in the process of converting him to a pitcher. I mean, a really good arm. There's no reason why Austin can't be a high 80s, low 90s arm. Um, and talking to Coach Nelson, um, as a matter of fact, we just got out of practice, and um, Douglas uh, threw a bullpen today. Um, and uh, Coach Nelson was very excited. Came back to me, let him know, hey, he looked really, really good. And we might give him some innings this weekend. Uh, so we're, we're still in the process of readjusting some things. but. Uh, uh, like, as you mentioned, Oaks will DH and um, catch when Maido Garcia needs a rest. 
Um, and you're, you're going to see Austin Douglas uh, uh, throw some innings for us. UTRGV takes on Jackson State Friday at 7 and Saturday at 6, and then Texas State on Tuesday at 6 to close out the homestand before opening up black play at Northern Colorado next weekend. He's Manny Mentrana. He's the head coach of the UTRGV baseball team. He's Jonah Goldberg. He's Mr. RGV Baseball. And we'll see you next week, but until then, put your V's up.